No, you haven't opened the wrong project. This project is for scroller game number one. But before we start the third mini game, I just wanted to point out something about the games you've created so far. Both the ball game and the maze game used these blocks when up arrow key pressed to control movement. So I can go up, down, left, right. There's a big problem with these blocks. If you try to press two buttons at once, it doesn't really work. You can only have one input at a time with these buttons. So in the next game, it's going to be important to encourage students to try a different technique, which is illustrated on the keyboard control skill card. So they have a card to help them with that. Just wanted to point it out here while I still have this project open. So now on to scroller game one. I'm going to create a new project. And what you'll need to instruct the students to do is to delete the cat and load the spaceship. In this game, students are going to create a spaceship that they'll be able to control with keyboard keys and also have it fire laser blasts at invading aliens. So the first step is to delete the cat. As in most things, Scratch, there are many ways to do that. The easiest way is to shift click on the cat and choose delete could also instruct them to use the delete tool which is near the top next to the grow and shrink tools that we used in the previous video and I can click once on the cat to delete it. Now when I go into the sprite library as a teacher I like to encourage them to use the filters so instructing them to click on transportation would reduce the number of sprites for them to be lured by. Don't want to spend too much time browsing so I can double click on the spaceship or select it and click OK. Now I have a spaceship. So the first instruction, the first challenge to students is to program the spaceship to be controlled by arrow keys but using different scratch blocks from the ones they used in the previous games. I'm going to show you those here. They'll find those on their game design skill card. When green arrow clicked, let me zoom in a bit more for you, I want to check if a key is pressed. So we're going to use key pressed from the sensing category as an alternate way to control movement. This not only allows players to click more than one button at a time to do something, such as moving and firing the laser at the same time, it also generally leads to smoother motion in the games and allows control with the code that isn't possible with those other scripts. Did you notice when you used a stop all script before, player was still able to control their ship because those hat blocks are not dictated by the stop block. It means they'll always be able to run even if you don't have the green flag clicked. As a programmer, I don't like that so much. So I'm going to say if right arrow pressed and it's probably a good idea to be encouraging students by this point to use X and Y values for movement so I'm gonna say instead of change direction and move change X by 10 but what do I need here to make sure that it keeps checking because we're not using that when key pressed hat block that makes it into a loop Yes, we need a loop. So forever, forever, if right arrow key pressed, change x by 10. I'll click the green flag and test it. It works. But of course, that's the only direction because I haven't programmed the left direction yet. So I'm going to just shift click on the if, choose duplicate, and say when left arrow key pressed, what do we want to change x by? Of course, negative 10. Now I can go left and right. So the first challenge is pretty straightforward. It's just making sure that they're using different blocks to do that. Probably a good idea at this point to make my spaceship a little bit smaller. I think most students will want to do that. So I'll just use the shrink tool. There's no right or wrong answer for size and composition just doing something that looks good to me and I want to leave ample space to be able to fire a laser blast. I'll click stop and move on to challenge number two. 
program laser to shoot out of spaceship when spacebar is pressed. So the part that they know is how to trigger something with a spacebar, right? We'll just duplicate again, change to spacebar. And I don't want to change x by negative 10. If space car if space key is pressed, I want to fire a laser. But notice, laser is going to require a different graphic. It will require a different sprite. So that means you might want to put this code on a new sprite. So what I should do is find a laser sprite. Now this is an open-ended challenge. Students can decide whether they want to design their own laser or choose something from the sprites library. I always start with something simple, so I think choosing something from the sprites library in this case is a little bit more simple. I'm going to say things to filter. Now I like this button too as a laser. It doesn't look like much of a laser now, but watch. If I click OK and then go to costumes, notice there's another costume which is much more fiery, a little bit more lasery. Although I don't like that outline so much. So I'm going to zoom in and show you one of my favorite tricks. If I use the color a shape tool, instead of coloring with a solid color as is currently set up, watch, I can choose the empty swatch, that red line stuck through it. Now it lets me fill with empty. So I can go to the outline that I don't want and click once to erase it. It's just a quick way to erase it. Now I have something that's a bit more lasery, although of course it's not oriented the way that I want it to be. So right now if I went into motion and said change Y, click that a few times, not so good. I want it oriented 90 degrees to the left, or right in this case, and I probably want to scale it to fit my spaceship. I don't want the laser to be bigger than the spaceship itself. So I'll go into costumes and oops, I don't want to erase it. I want to use the select tool. Click once. And notice once it's selected with the select tool, there's a handle in the top here. When I move my cursor, it turns into that rotate symbol. So I can click and drag to orient it vertically. Now I have a vertically oriented laser. But one thing I notice is the darker part is on the bottom and the lighter part is on the right. That's not how fire works. So I'm going to click undo, select again, and orient the other way so that the darker part is towards the top and the lighter part is towards the bottom. How did they fill this with that gradation between the two colors? Well, if you select the color of shape tool and you choose two different colors, let's choose a red and a light orange. Notice there are different fill options here. So I could grab the horizontal fill because I've rotated once and that gives me the option to fill with a gradation between those two colors. Now if I want the red to be at the top and the orange to be at the bottom I could just swap colors by clicking on that back swatch. Now you have red at the top and orange at the bottom. I think I kind of like going between red and yellow so I'll reverse, give you something like that. Kind of intense, but I just wanted to show you how that gradient works. You also have the option to do circular gradients. And I want to point out that in bitmap mode, it, if you use a gradient once, it's difficult to add another gradient because it just wants to fill wherever there's a solid color. But in vector mode, you can change the gradient at any time. So I really like that about vector mode. So I have my laser. Now I want to change the scale. I don't like changing the scale in the edit, paint editor view because it can mess around with that center point. Let's see. I want the center to be in the center for now. Eventually I might want to adjust that to show where it appears in relation to my spaceship. But for now I want to scale it and I want to scale it kind of on the spaceship. So I find it more helpful to use the shrink tool right on the stage 
so I can really see it in comparison with the spaceship size. So that's better. It's smaller. Cool. So now I have a laser beam sprite and a spaceship sprite. I don't need that change Y just yet, but I'm going to leave it there because I will be using change Y to make it move vertically across the stage. Let's go back to the spaceship. Remember, I took this if key pressed. I can copy that script from the spaceship sprite to the laser sprite by just clicking and dragging it onto there. And then I don't want that on spaceship anymore, so I'll drag it back into the drawer to delete it. If I go to button 2, I'll now see it copied that script over. To avoid confusion, I'm going to click on the info button and change the name of button 2 to be laser. So if space key pressed, we'll need a when green arrow key, when green flag clicked, and forever. So when green flag clicked forever, if key spacebar pressed, then what? What do we want to do with the laser when the key is pressed? Well, we want the laser to go up. The challenge is to program the laser to fire. So I want to change Y by 10, but I don't want the player to have to hold down the spacebar. So what if I said, I could save forever, but then it's going to get trapped at the top. Watch. If I say forever change Y by 10, two things happen. One, click the green flag, press the space bar, the laser stays at the top. Also, if I press the space bar again, nothing happens because the script is stuck in this forever loop. It's not actually checking the if again. It just keeps changing Y. So we don't want to do it forever. What other block could I use here instead of forever? Well, repeat would allow me to specify how many times it changes the Y by 10. So if I press it now, green flag, ah, notice my laser is stuck at the top. I also need to set the laser's initial position when green flag is clicked. So let's bring it back down here. Go to X negative 29 and Y negative 95. So now if I click, do space, and it moves 10 pixels 10 times, so 100 pixels. That's not quite enough. So maybe we should do, say, 30. Space. Huh. Now, if you're not sure how far it should travel, I want to show you something that could be very helpful with all game designs. On the stage, if I go to the Backdrops tab and go to the Backdrop Library, scroll all the way to the bottom, scroll all the way to the bottom, sorry there's a little lag, see I have an XY grid, so I can go, if I go full screen you can see that better. It shows me the possible XY values, so the center of the stage is 0, 0, X is 480 wide, so you can have a positive x of 240 for the rightmost, negative 240 for leftmost, and the y dimensions are 360 pixels, so 180 positive or 180 negative. So I could estimate where I want that laser to go. If you want it to be precise, you could also do this. When the laser is at that top point, it should tell me the xy value. So y of 184 because of the center point. So I could make it really precise. For now, I'm not so worried about precise. I'm just trying to get the quickest solution to that challenge, to fire the laser beam. On the stage, go to backdrops. I can leave that backdrop there for future reference by just clicking back on backdrop 1. So if I click the green flag, press the space bar, the laser does fire. Technically, I have met challenge number 2 with a few problems. What if I move my spaceship? Yeah, click the green flag, move the spaceship, the laser's staying in place. That's not so helpful. And also, it's still not allowing me to fire more than once. It's going to the top, but when I press the space bar, it's not returning the laser to where it was. 
So how would you adjust that? If we look at the laser scripts, what would you need to change? Look where the go to XY is. We want something so that when the space key is pressed, it also sets that go to XY. We want to set it at the beginning and here. But if I say go to XY, let's duplicate this. I'll shift click to duplicate that block and put it after if space key pressed. Watch what happens. Now I can fire multiple times, but it's only firing from the, near the center where the ship was originally. So how do I get the laser to go to where the ship is when the space key is pressed? Look in motion again. Do you see a block that tells a sprite to go to a specific place? Look at this go to block. What's inside there? Spaceship. You can have it go to the position where the spaceship is. So we could say, when green flag clicked, go to the spaceship. And if space key pressed, go to the spaceship again so that you could fire a laser again. Spaceship, right? Press the green flag. It does go to where the spaceship is. But I don't like that I can see it on top of the spaceship. And did you see what happened at the beginning of the game? Click the green flag. It's going to where the spaceship is, but then staying there. So you've already learned a block in the looks category that could fix that. We want to hide the, the um, laser at the beginning. So it could go to spaceship, but we want it to be hidden. And then we would want it to show when the space key is pressed, right? So show here. But I think it should go after it goes to spaceship so that we don't see it while it's kind of in between. Now I click the green flag, move my spaceship, press the fire, and it works. But see how the laser is still appearing in front of the spaceship and it's not at the top, it's kind of in the middle as if it was firing out of the window or something. So there are a few ways to fix that. One is, for the laser, you could say, go back a layer. Or, on the spaceship, we could say, go to front. That way, we make sure that the spaceship is in front of any other sprites on the stage. So I can press space. But if the spaceship is moving, see? The laser is appearing kind of behind the spaceship, which I don't like so much. So, how would I have the laser up here at the top of the spaceship. Well, I'm going to click the green flag once so that it goes to where the spaceship is. Maybe it would be easier for students if the spaceship and the laser both started in the center. So you could say at the very beginning of the game, go to x, oops, x0. The y can be whatever it is now for the spaceship. That's not a big deal, right? And then the laser, I want to say also the x to 0. I'm not so worried about the y because it's going to go to where the spaceship is. So I'll click the green flag, and they should both be at 0 now. But just to be sure, I'm going to click set x to 0 for the... Let's see, I'll click set x to 0 for my laser. I also want to show the laser for a minute. So I can just click on sh the show block so that it appears. Of course, it's hidden because it's behind my spaceship. So in costumes, what can I do so that this laser will appear, when it goes to spaceship, it will appear a bit higher? I can just move it. So I'll click once on it, and remember what keys can I use on the keyboard to nudge that laser? Up arrow. So I'm going to hold the up arrow key down. I'm moving it in this view. Better. See, I'm testing it. Moving it. Stop. Green arrow. Moving it. We 
want it to be really close to the top. So again, I'm going to nudge it even more vertically. Because it's using the center point to determine where the spaceship is and where the laser is. So when it tells laser to go there, it's really saying, laser, you should go to where your center point lines up with the ship's center point. So really, I think I want to move it pretty much to the top, at least as it's set up in my screen. See how it's appearing there? I like that. That's easy to instruct. If students are having trouble, you could say, well, try, try putting that laser at the top of your paint window. Definitely better. So it's firing where I am. Is there some other way that we could do that? Well, you could have it change Y initially before it even appears, right? So you could say change Y by 20 right here. Now it is appearing above the spaceship. So two totally legitimate ways to do it. Pretty cool. Now there's a more advanced way to do this that works much better and would allow you to fire multiple lasers at once. But that comes later. That's going to be challenge six. For now, let's say that they've accomplished challenge number two, programming laser to shoot out of spaceship when spacebar pressed. In the next challenge, they're going to be adding enemies that disappear when struck by a laser. But I think this is a good amount for this video, so I'm going to stop this video, and in the next video go through challenges 3, 4, 5, and 6.